Hello, everybody. Afternoon. Hello, and welcome to another Pro Tipster Sports betting podcast. Joining me is that way Pro Tipster Martin and Pro Tipster Dan. Ah, my camera's too small. Anyway, you see them anyway. Hello, fellas. Hello, how are we doing? Uh, before we get started, then just reminders: you can listen to us on uh, iTunes, on Android Podcatchers. Uh, put these videos out on Facebook Live, where uh, you will be. You may be watching them right now, or uh, on YouTube as well. So make sure and uh, get us on any of those platforms, and tell everyone about us as well. Because uh, the more people know about us, the more podcasts we can make, and the better we can make them. And I apologise for the shanty town yeah, behind me. More, more, pe- more people who watch. We- Paddy can move to a proper studio. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I won't have to build my own. So yeah, that's what's behind me. I built some. Uh... Yeah, Paddy went full DIY this weekend, lads. I hardly watched any football. I was making this uh, studio uh, soundproof, and I hope the sound is much better than what it's been over the last couple of weekends. Dan Martin, how's it going? Yeah, very well. Are you still in the loft, or you moved? No, I'm still upstairs. Yeah, still upstairs in the loft. That's why I have to do it. Yeah, <laughs> it's too echoey. Oh, no. uh, Dan, 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 Dan. You went to uh, Poland versus England. Uh, tell us about it. Okay. Um, oh God, it was a bad game. <laughs> I think I was the only English person there, a crowd of nearly 15,000 people, one English person, um, <laughs> which was a little bit scary because, of course, when England scored, it was like, yeah, oh, shit, no. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure you would have been fine. Yeah, obviously you were. You made it back anyway. Yeah, it was, it was, a, it was just a game. I think they try and get, encourage these players to play technically rather than like with um, physicality and directness. So... <laughs> It's all really what I like to refer to as tippy tap, tippy tappy bollocks. <laughs> <laughs> Gave a few chances. Um, Poland didn't make much in front of goal. England made one clear cut chance, took it and scored late on. Yeah. And the whole, the, like the whole stadium was just silence because um, you know, big black guy up front scoring, and like everyone's just like, ah. Oh. Um, uh, was there anyone that stood out for any from any of the teams? Um. Yeah. I, well, I, what didn't help was I didn't have um. There was there was no team sheet and there was nothing on Twitter. The England England FA had nothing on Twitter, which didn't. Yeah, they didn't help. even tweet about it, did they? No. Like I said, I was the only English person there. Yeah. Um. There was two. Uh, so Aaron um, uh, Wan Bissaka, the um, the Crystal Palace right back, he he got sent off. All arms and legs. All arms and legs. Um, <laughs> it. Um, Russian Hepburn Murphy played up front. Um, he's a DVB, and he wasn't very good. <laughs> he was replaced by Keenan Davis, another DVB who scored. Um, there was um, Josh Sims. Yep, I thought he'd play. Didn't do much. Didn't do much. Um, who else did I see? Uh, there was a lad from Wolves, I think, mm-hmm. Marcus Edwards. And the- it was much more muchness, you know. I, I've been to plenty of these games, and I was, n- no one really stood out for me. Mm. But it, you know, England showed why they, they won the, uh, the the Under Twenty World Cup because they closed out a win. They played crap and won. And um, at the lower age levels, England are really good at doing this. You know, it was only penalties against Germany that stopped us in the Under Twenty Ones. Mm. Just whether they can translate that form into the national team remains to be seen. Mm. Fair enough. Uh, did you watch much football over the weekend? Did you watch England and and and, and Netherlands? Um, no, no. I, I saw the goal. Yeah, I actually, Paddy, did you watch the Ireland game? Oh God, oh that was that was a tough watch. Yeah, I did watch it. Yeah, right. So you know who was in goal for Ireland during that game? Uh, yeah, I forget his name already. <laughs> Legend Colin Doyle. Yeah, that's it, Doyle. Yeah, and yeah, that, yeah. That was on a Friday, and the mm-hmm. Saturday he turned out for Bradford and played ninety minutes. He did not. Yeah, yeah. And kept a clean sheet. That's brilliant. <laughs> Not bad. Not bad. Well done to him. Yeah, uh, Declan Rice was uh, out, was really good. He's been getting loads of praise uh, since the match. He was wearing the number ten shirt though for some reason. So some That's of the strange. lads were saying, "Yeah, it is strange." Some of them were saying, "Ah, oh, you know, maybe you know, like Rude Hullet or something." I was like, Declan Rice doesn't remember Rude Hullet. He wasn't <laughs> old, wasn't old enough, you know. Um, yeah, they uh, they they were pretty bad. Ireland, they were had lots of new faces, but they just played the same. I don't know. They just get the ball and they're like, ah, ah, football, ah, 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 and then get rid of it. It's so going to take a bit of time for you guys, and it? it's a transition period. So, 
Yeah, Give but the thing is, I mean, I don't know, man. To be honest, uh, I wanted Martin O'Neill out after the last campaign just for a change. And okay, so you know, new, uh, the new what they call League of Nations, Nations League, whatever you want to call it, is coming up, and you think, all right, mm-hmm. he's he's brought in lots of new players. Let let's see how it goes. But after so after one match, I have to just call it. Say, no. It's not going to happen with him. It's just he's awful. I mean, he he doesn't pick a team. It doesn't pick the team until about half an hour before kickoff. Like how how, how are you supposed to prepare? Like so you have no idea. Declan Rice didn't know he was playing until half an hour before, and then he's like, right, yeah, you're your centre back today. So oh, all right, okay, so my first oh. match. Ooh, nice man. Like it's it's just this kind of Nigel Clough type of management, which is what Martin O'Neill's always been about. Like he his thinking is it keeps players on his toes. But the thing is, Nigel Clough had. Pretty good players, you know. And Martin no O'Neill, huh? yeah. I mean, if you got, a, I was gonna say, if you got a like 19, 20 year old, you're being told half an hour before kickoff that he's making his debut, yeah. then he yeah. needs time to prepare, exactly. Yeah, you know, and plus, like, trying try to figure, and then, like, if like nowadays, if you're if you're playing, I don't know, left back or right back or something, then you know, well, I mean, if I was a player. I'd be like, I'd be researching who I'm marking. Like, okay, like, does he like to come in on his bad foot or what, what, you know, these kind of things. And and the players get DVDs to watch of their opposition. But if you're playing for Martin O'Neill and you don't even know you're playing, like, I'm not watching that DVD. I'm going to play some Pro Evo. <laughs> you know, it's as simple as that. Like, it's 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 a bad style of management. And I don't know. I, I, I really don't think it's going to work out. The, the, knives are, the knives have already been out for O'Neill and he annoyed a lot of people with flirting with Everton and... Uh, uh, no, it's Everton and uh, not Southampton. Yeah, Southampton. Uh, no, not Southampton. Oh God, who else got fired? What's Everton it? and Stoke. Everton and Stoke. So when he was flirting with, with both of them, uh, <laughs> and now it's like I don't know. I can't see it. I'd say he. I don't know. I don't know. I, I, it'll all end in tears. I think, and it's it's a shame because there's there's decent players that they're never. Ireland's never going to be a world, you know, power of football. But they have okay players. You know, you have Declan Rice now, Matt Doherty from Wolves. You have um, uh, Seanan Maguire from Preston. No, they're all decent players. Yeah, your man Scott Hogan, he's a D- DVB. Dan, I, I don't think he's all that good. He's all right. but It's not 15 million, is it? Oh, definitely not, no. no. They, they have okay players, but but I don't think this manager is, is the right manager for them. I think he, 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 I think he needs um, more kind of top professionals to kind of manage in the way he manages. I, th- I, th- I think they should just could give the... Give it to Roy Keane, and Roy Keane just scared the bejesus out of them all. <laughs> and see what happens. Anyway, I'm ranting here about Ireland. No one cares about Ireland except Irish people. <laughs> um, I was watching uh, Germany, Spain, though. I didn't you see that. I saw no. bits. Yeah, yeah, I saw little bits. I didn't know the whole game. That was good. I thought that Thomas was good. Thomas Muller's goal was good. Oh, it was great. Yeah, Spain. Spain were class in the first half, and then they just kind of went, "All right." That's our half finished. Uh, now Germany, you play, and then Germany were brilliant in the second half. It's, it was a, it was a really really good match, really really good match to watch. And uh, I know you were watching Brazil and Russia, uh, weren't you, Martin? Oh, that was that was boring. <laughs> I actually switched off at nil nil, and then I switch it off, and then they go and score a few goals. <laughs> Scored three goals then. Yeah. Uh, That's good. Not much. Watch, um, Argentina versus Italy. Oh, I haven't seen uh, that yet. I know Lanzini scored. Obviously, Lanzini scored. Didn't they debut international goal? Yeah. Mm. It was. It wasn't on telly. It was only. I. I eventually found it, uh, a Ukrainian stream for it, and uh, yeah, it wasn't a great match. So I. I went back to to Germany, and Spain, because there was something actually happening in that one. But uh, yeah, you. You don't race uh, Italy or uh, Argentina as manager, do you, Martin? Well, only because like, I don't understand why he's not calling up Cardi or Dybala, um, and he's come out and said that he's not sure they'll have a place at the World Cup. I just don't get it. That's ridiculous. Not having the ball in the team is ridiculous anyway. You know, mm. like Icardi, I can get because they're top heavy with, with strikers. Well, there's a little it. rumor going around that you mentioned earlier. Uh, well, no, it's, that's not a rumor. That's, that's not, not a rumor. Icardi, Icardi is married to um, Maxi Lopez, Maxi Lopez's ex wife. Oh, right. Well, he's married to her. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, it is. And um, even though Lopez isn't in, isn't in the national team anymore, it, it, it annoyed. Uh, a lot of their old, uh, their old uh, t- teammates, so they don't seem to want the Cardi in the team because he's a home wrecker, you know. And I can't be sued for that because it's true. Purpose <laughs> <laughs> uh, of nothing, a purpose of nothing. But um, I wonder how Chris Martin feels uh, about the new Reading manager. Yeah. 
Do you want to give the background story on that, Dan? Or? Um, <laughs> I wasn't sacked from Derby for footballing reasons. <laughs> Maybe we'll leave it at that because yeah. I don't think that's public knowledge. The Icardi stuff. Ah, you can guess it. You know. Um, oh my God, my 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 internet's doing strange things here. So, lads, uh, what's happening going on this weekend? What have you been writing about? Um, a couple of things going on. I mean, I. I I tipped up in the newsletter today, actually. Um, Spanish Segunda today, uh, Cadiz versus Huesca. I don't know how you pronounce that. Huesca, maybe. Um, Cadiz lost one of the last 12. It's very tight between the two sides. There's only three points separating them in the league. Um, so I personally think half time draw at 1.77 could be the way to go there. Um, I've also been writing a couple of international previews. There's a Scottish game in midweek, um, St Johnston versus Hamilton. Uh, that's interesting. Picked up on a few stats right in that. And actually, Hamilton, uh, pretty decent value. They're at 4.5. And when I was writing about it, just some of the stats. St. Johnson, St. Johnson are terrible at home recently, um, whereas Hamilton have won two and drawn one of the last three games. So Hamilton are actually the form side going into it. So I think there's a bit of value there. Um, and yeah, got a few more previews to write this week, but yeah, oh, I hate international week. I can't wait for it. <laughs> I love it. I, I've been on a roll recently. <laughs> I've been on Come a on roll. Um, no, uh, so Saturday, um, premium newsletter, I nailed Fleetwood to win. I also nailed a three-timer at 11.52. Um, Northern Ireland to beat South Korea, Canada <laughs> to beat New Zealand. Did you uh, call that? Yep. That's good. Cool. I was, I've been, I, I, yeah, I, I wrote an article about that. And I, I'm just looking at the stats, I was going, so Korea aren't going to beat these because Korea had, um, Korea had two groups to get through, didn't they, to, to qualify? Mm. And in their first group, they won, I think, 10 out of 10 matches, didn't concede a single goal, uh, let in or scored 27, didn't concede that. And then they went into the second group stage of the Asia thing. And I think they had eight matches, they only won three so they're they're not as good on paper as they are so you know, well done on pe- picking that one yeah it's 2.85 i think that was i had mexico to beat iceland as well nice. uh today i backed china to lose the czech republic which was obvious i was gonna back uruguay to beat wales and of course they've done that um i've got albania to beat norway later on um we have a uh, for those who obviously don't work in pro tips offices we have a uh, a competition a daily competition um, where we have to tip up, and Albania versus Norway is our, is our pick for the day. I actually won it last week. Yeah, you, you, you picked uh, Nigeria to be Poland as well. That was a yeah, brave yeah. man in the Polish mm. office. Um, they were good. They were mad odds, though, weren't they, Nigeria? Four crazy. When you think of how they Poland got to the home for four years. Mm-hmm. But Poland, Poland, haven't, haven't, <clears throat> Poland, See, Poland haven't lost at home for four years. They haven't lost at home for four years, but Poland is transitional at the moment. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Um, <coughs> excuse me. I wrote about um. Uh, trying to think <coughs> what else I wrote about today. Yeah, oh, on, on, on Poland, right? On, on, on Poland, Dan. Dan, on Poland first before we move on. What, what do you make of our manager? I think he's. I think he's a joke. What Adam Navalka? Yeah. Um. Yeah, he's a joke. Yeah, I don't no. think he has a clue what he's doing. He just has these players, and it's like, oh, he's got Robert Lewandowski. Yeah. yeah. You know, and and I think he was just given the job because like he speaks Polish. Basically, and they didn't want to hire a, a foreigner because they're just a whole bunch of xenophobes in the Polish FA. What was well, he doing before? Uh, uh, Gornik, Gornik Zabja. Yeah. Okay. The, the thing is, as well, is that they've, 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 they've instituted these rules where they um, like in the past when they had a, a manual Elisa DB and all that sort of thing, they're not doing that anymore. You know, they're, they're not chasing players, they've got connections, as it were. So yeah. they wouldn't have, like, under the way, the way they want to do things now. They wouldn't have tried to get um, Miroslav Kloser, who was born in Poland but played for Germany, or Podolski, yeah. yeah. Also, he was born up the road in Gliwice, I think. Oh, right. Gliwice, yeah, yeah. Um, both of them born to German families, so as Schiedlers, which are very common here in Silesia. Yeah. Um, they play they play South Korea tomorrow night, right mm. here in Katowice at Stadion Slomski. Are you going? Um, Tries to get a ticket, it's sold out. Nightmare. Oh. Um, I, I, don't, I don't know if Poland are going to get um, anything out of this. Um, I know South Korea are poor. I think they're ranked 60-something mm. in the world. But 
I don't um, know one quite sure. Yeah, Thanks I would for have listening to the Pro Tipster Football Show. Check out ProTipster.com where you can earn money by sharing your tips and coupons. Sign up now and get our free daily newsletter where our experts share their tips. Go to ProTipster.com for more details. Um, you know we've got a comment here. Hello, Sasha Mender. Hello, Sasha. How's Hi. it going? Hello. How are you? Hello there. Um, Thanks for joining. So, yeah, um, I wrote uh, Montenegro against Turkey, which sounds like it's going to be a real boring game. Because <laughs> <laughs> Turkey are just dreadful. Mm-hmm. The, um, the win against uh, Ireland was only the second under Luchescu. Uh, Montenegro, basically Stevan Jovetic and 10 other blokes. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, 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 yeah. Might be a little bit harsh. I think there's a couple others who are like uh, fairly well known, but yeah, basically Stephen Jovetic and ten others. Mm. Um, yeah. So that one I've gone for a draw, and I also wrote about um, another boring game. Who was it? I can't. Remember. Well, yeah, check on the. But again, it was a draw. I know that much. Um, mm. Hang on. <clears throat> Where's my list of? Where's my list of games I wrote? Uh, it wasn't Spain Argentina because I think that one's gonna be good. Hungary against Scotland. Oh, dear. God, that's going to be... Hungary <laughs> and Dora in qualifying. They did not. Luxembourg- they? Yes, they did. Oh. Luxembourg in a friendly. Wow. And so you've got Scotland, who are the Scotland. Nil-nil. <laughs> Nil-nil in a few fights. You'd be the best. <laughs> no. um, actually, I... There was a um, there was a bet this weekend that I, I, well a match that I reckon <laughs> ruined a few accumulators. Go Gibraltar on. against Latvia. Oh yeah, like eighty eighth minute winner. Gibraltar, yeah, Gibraltar won. won, didn't they? Yeah, that's right. First yeah. home win. Yeah. First home win, second international win ever. Um, and this, the, the weird thing is, I, I had to write a preview on their under twenty one side, and you can see that the, they are trying hard to bring three players. Mm-hmm. They've got, um, you know, yeah, okay, so the Gibraltar Premier League, they all play at the same ground. And, you know, it's a Premier League as in, like, the Silesian Business League is a Premier League. They all play at the same ground? So, like, you've got a midday kickoff, and then two hours later, there's another game. Yeah, they all play at the Victoria <laughs> Stadium. Gibraltar's That's brilliant. Small. Malta, Malta's another country that does it. They all play at the Tikali National Stadium. Okay. I never knew that. Yeah, there you go. The more you know, the more you grow. The more you know. Yeah, exactly. Um, That's true. No, I've been looking at Sir- some Serie B matches. Um, Ascoli are playing Barry during the week, and uh, or Barry, I should say, not Barry. Barry's from Cork, and uh, <laughs> Empoli are playing. I'm going to butcher this one now. Salernitana, and that's not too bad actually. Um, yeah. uh, Empoli, Empoli should win that fairly easily. They're shocking odds, though. I think they're only about one point five to win, but um, I think the way to look at that is both teams to score no. It's about one point seven five. I think something like that. Uh, Empoli are Empoli are really good. They have uh, 39 goals at home uh, this season, and they've won 11 out of the last 16. They're they're on fire. They're going to be back up in Syria, Syria next season. They were unlucky last season. They got really good on the last day by a point. Mm-hmm. And um, but I think their biggest worry uh, next season is going to be keeping. Uh, where are the names of them now? Uh, keeping their strikers. So you have Francesco Caputo and uh, Alfredo Donnarumma. He's not, re- not related to the keeper. There's um, a lot of done of rumours about these days. It must have been a busy grandfather or something. <laughs> <laughs> so they've scored 21 and 18 goals, respectively. So not bad at all. It'd be hard to keep them at Empoli next season. While Barry, what happened with Barry? Yeah, both teams to score has occurred in five out of five previous Ascoli matches. Both teams to score 1.73. I think that looks all right. And Barry are undefeated in the last seven as well. So <laughs> Barry on the Asian handicap is zero. Uh, looks good. Uh, Serie B, lads. There's a lot of stuff. I know you aren't into it, but I actually like it. There's a lot going on there. The the fight for promotion is is good. The fight for the bottom, I think. I think the bottom eight uh, teams. There's only about six points between them. So uh, yeah. Yeah, it's, ex- it's going to be a good end to the season. I'd love to see Barry back up, just because Barry were one of the teams when 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 us three would have started watching the in the nineties on football Italia. Yeah. Yeah. David Platt signed for them, didn't they? So David Platt was Barry. Yeah, yeah, he had played for Barry actually. That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So no, the DVD. Uh, that's my football. I don't know. I don't know World Cup one as well. That's why I know a little bit about South Korea because I was writing about Sweden versus South Korea. They're playing. Oh, uh, nice. Uh, yeah, I was surprised at how uh, how bad South Korea were the other day. Um, 
I thought they would have put up a better fight against Northern Ireland, but Northern Ireland are uh, a very good defensive team at home. And you know? the young lad who plays QPR, he uh, scored the winner, didn't he? Yeah, on his mm-hmm. debut, uh, Paul yeah. Smythe. Yeah, that's right, yeah. I think he didn't he sign for QPR in the summer from like somewhere like Linfield, uh, Linfield or something like that. He's he's, a, he's only a young lad. He's not played many games in the championship mm-hmm. not that much. Um, he's supposed to be only small, but I think he played for the twenty ones as well. Played for the twenty ones. They called him up and he played on the from the bench to the full side as well. Oh, nice, fair play to him. Um, come here. Mm-hmm. Uh, which one of you wrote about England and Italy? Oh yeah, I had a little write about England and Italy. Um, I'm a, a little bit, a little bit sad that Nick Pope's not going to get a chance. Obviously, Pickford was in goal for the Holland game, and it's been confirmed that Butland's going to be in goal for the Italy game. Um, I think I've gone with England to sneak it actually, probably body or goal. Um, I just, yeah, I think Italy are just uh, need to ask themselves a few questions over the next few months and try and try and build on their disappointment at getting knocked out by Sweden, uh, so they won't be at the World Cup. But I think England are putting a professional performance. Um, and, Another boring friendly, and they'll probably sneak it one nil. Mm. Uh, yeah, I, I can't get excited about England, to be honest. Um, it took me a, it took me a while to write it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so when, when you see the squad that he calls up, it's hard to get excited. Yeah, um, I don't know. I mean, like apparently they, they play really well um, on Friday. Yeah, so I, they, I, they, I, was, they were solid against Holland, but uh, uh, they didn't look uh, from the highlights I saw. They didn't look. They're not going to scare anybody in Russia. We've and Netherlands are a terrible side right now. Yeah. Mm. So no, I didn't say I was at a beer festival. Sorry. Well, I think mean, he played like four fullbacks or something. He started with four fullbacks or something. Yeah, Carl Walker, Walker played on the right of a back three, didn't they? Mm. But it works, I guess. At the end of the day, everyone's just going to see the result when we won. So. Yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah, Italy, uh, they, 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 they need to get someone in charge, I think. I mean, it's fairly, it's smart getting the former under-21 fella in because he can blood players from that team. Because, but then yeah. again, the under-21s, you've probably seen them last year in Poland, Dan, when they were yeah. here for the championship, and they weren't great, you know? No, I'll tell you, I'll tell you um, Donnarumma didn't impress me. Uh, he was playing for the 21s last year, and I thought, 80 million for him? No. <laughs> Mm-hmm. The, only, the, only player, the, the only player that impressed me was um, he played. Well, I don't know if he's still there. It was at Sassuolo, um, okay. not Bernardeschi. I'm trying to remember his name. Bernardi. Uh, yeah, Bernardi. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, he was in midfield, wasn't he? Yeah, at 22, yeah. he was Sassuolo's record goal scorer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well. He was, yeah. And he yeah. was genuinely decent. And I thought, wow, you know, he's, I, I, I know Bernardeschi went to Juventus like 35 million, but I think Bernardi's gone now from Sassuolo. Mm-hmm. He's his laptop because he, he is a talent, but there were, there wasn't much in that um, in that Italian side. No, oh, I think they need to get need to get a manager in there uh, permanently. Maybe Conte will come back if he doesn't go to PSG. I think that's where it's, his rumor he's going to go now. Although, yeah. what, what do you think it is, Tom, Thomas Tuchel? It looks like PSG and Arsenal are going to be fighting over him. Uh, I don't think Arsenal are going to go through him. If I'm honest, no, I, I know I, I know it's reports that they might, but I can't see that happening. I think, Do you think Arsenal will go for them? Well, that's a good question, isn't it? I, I mean, it might, it, I personally think they might go down the route of Vieira or Arteta and try and try and build them up. I mean, when they when they took um, Wenger, Wenger was a no one. Like he came to them from Nagoya Grampus Eight, didn't see, they? Yeah. And he was a no one, and it worked for them. And I, I but I can't see them having the patience. To bring in a manager like Wenger was, you know, like this professor type who, yeah. you know, may, maybe goes to players who you're like, huh, who are they? Um, I don't think I, I don't think Arsenal fan TV will stand for it. No, um, I think financially you can't afford to do that these days. <laughs> but yeah, Arsenal fan TV is hilarious. Yeah, it's a bit mad, all right. Yeah, but, but yeah. there's only so much of it you can take though before you, you know, <laughs> you know. But no, just going back to England, um, I think England will win, but. Annoying, annoyingly over here, if England do beat Italy, the journalists will have a field day and, and all the fans will get excited that we're going to win the World Cup again. Uh, and then we'll Wayne, probably lose in three group games. We ain't going to win. It's, it's not a good Italy team. This is, I mean, if they're playing... You know, it's a play, no, it's a, it's a good idea to play the Netherlands and Italy. Yeah. They, were, they were great ideas when, whenever they came, came up with those friendlies. But the thing is now that Netherlands are dire... Yeah. Uh, 
it feel pretty bad as well. So, like, you know, if, if they come up against them two years ago, it would have been a test. Yeah, but true. Now, really not much of a test. They would have been better off playing, I don't know, Germany and Argentina or something like that. But then again, maybe maybe, maybe that'll be kept for the World Cup. You know? <laughs> it was interesting what you said um, You said in the last podcast on Thursday, actually. You were talking about Panama, Denmark, was it? <laughs> yeah. You were like, Panama are not going to get beaten by by a lot, and I think they only lost one nil, didn't they? So. Yeah, 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 yeah. I love, and you know, you know what I did? I'm an idiot, right? I was <laughs> telling everyone about this bet. Bet Panama yeah. plus one and a half. Bet them plus one and a half. And Mugen's here. Totally forgot about the bet. Sat down to watch telly. Came on and went, ah, oh, panic, panic, panic. Opened yeah. up. Open up, did a live bet, and, and and the line had moved from one and a half to one point two five. So I got that. I, I had a half win instead of a win. So uh, yeah, I hope people run it. But I'm telling you, watch out for Panama in the summer. This is their uh, this is their master plan to take on teams that play like England and master the English game. They're just going to knock lumps out of England. Like there was a fellow sent off against Denmark the other day. Like, well, how much of an animal do you have to be to 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 get sent off against the, against the Danes? Like these are Vikings. No, little, little South Americans are fighting Vikings and getting sent off. <laughs> like that. You know, I'm just is. waiting for you to turn up in a Panama shirt next week. <laughs> now I'm going to get the chili one. The chili one has the, has the red. <laughs> I can't wait for that. Is Dan gone? Dan is gone. Nah, cool. nah, You're still nah, there. I'm still You're here. I'm, I'll tell you what shirt I'm actually, I am actually going to buy. Um, yeah. America. I don't know if you've seen the new America shirt, but it is. I did see Not it. Not seen it, actually. Not seen it. Yeah. I had a fight with someone on Twitter because uh, I was making fun of the Americans calling the u- uniforms. Um, the new American uniform. That's not a uniform. A uniform is what <laughs> butcher wears. Yeah. When you go to school, a uniform. Should, should get, uh, Freddie Adu on the back, then. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> when they get a name on the back, it's an ex-West Ham and Birmingham City player. Jonathan Spector. Yes. Nice. Well uh, right, lads. Uh, come here. Just, there's only one more uh, match I want to talk about, and that yeah. is Spain Argentina. Who who wrote about that? Me. Right. Come on. So Tell the us. big question. The big question is: Does Messi play? Because um, it came out that he's got a hamstring strain. That's why he didn't play against Italy. Mm. Has been playing through the pain a bit, and I don't know if it's mind games or if he's like he's, if he's going to play or not. But um, I think I'm not convinced of the same team without him. Um, you know, and the, so, like you've said, like Dybala, Icardi, not getting a game. Aguero will probably start up front. Um, I don't know if I don't know if Lanzini will play. And then Spain, David Silva has uh, dropped out the team. He's not going to be in this game. So I reckon they might play Marco Asensio nice. um, with uh, Isco and is it Koke? Koke, yeah, yeah. Um, all behind, um, well, in the Wanda Metro- uh, Metropolitano, who else can play other than Diego Costa? Mm. Um, Morata's injured. Rodrigo scored against, um, scored in their game, but I don't think against Germany, but I don't think they'll keep him in the team. But yeah. it's a really tough one to call. Um, really, really tough one to call. I think it's going to be tight. Um, but um, the the, uh, the Englishman in me hopes Spain wins. I think <laughs> Spain might sneak it. Yeah, the thing is, though, it's like um, we were talking about this on Thursday, uh, myself and Martin. We were saying that, um, you know, with Neymar being out for uh, Brazil, it's a good chance for uh, it was uh, Tite, the manager, to uh, you know experiment with what his plan B and plan C is going to be because Neymar is obviously going to start in Russia and then you know just play around with who can come in for him for substitutions or or, or whatever if his, if the injury doesn't doesn't uh, clear up. And this is what. Uh, Argentina's manager should be doing without Messi. Like, like as soon as he heard Messi was 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 wasn't going to play, like he should have been on the phone to Dybala just immediately, you know. And and it's ridiculous that he doesn't have the. It it looks like he's not prepared. It looks like they're just going to have a plan A for the World Cup and not going to have a plan B. It's just going to be yeah, give the ball to Messi, which is what all Argentina have been doing. Um, which is a shame because they've brilliant players, you know. I can just envision um, what's going to happen now. Messi will get injured. They, he won't go to the World Cup. Argentina will end up winning the World Cup and Messi will still be without a World Cup. Okay. Serious so question. So we're Serious question. <laughs> <laughs> so if Messi doesn't go to the World Cup, yeah. uh, say, say Messi doesn't go and Neymar doesn't go, on a scale of 1 to 10, how pissed are the sponsors going to be? <laughs> you, Absolutely. That would be lovely, wouldn't it? <laughs> 
<laughs> Actually, speaking of Swansea's being fuming, um, Russia's best player, Alexander Kokorin, is out of the World Cup. Yeah, he's gone. Um, yeah, he did his um, he did his uh, Khrushchevs uh, playing for Zenit against RB uh, against the Rassenball Sport Leipzig, mm-hmm. and he, he's done. Mm-hmm. And Russia's slim chance of getting anything, uh, I think, has probably evaporated. He was their best player. Yeah, yeah, they were they were awful against Brazil. I don't, I don't well, know they, who. They've got no quality in the team. They, you know, like they got France tomorrow. Oh, ouch! Yeah, France so beat so, Colombia the other day, didn't they? So two one finished, did it? Two one? No, yeah, you're right. no. Oh, was it two one? No, two, one. Colombia won three two. Shut up! Oh, nice. Because I did the preview for this. This is how I know Cochrane was injured. Yeah. Wow. Um, I switched off at two one. Yeah, Colombia won. Know. Um, France just basically went to sleep second half. Um, Didier Deschamps blew his nuts in the changing room afterwards. Because basically, um, they, they just fell apart, you know. Deschamps just got to set up 4-4-2. And for 35 minutes, yeah, great. But, like, Colombia switched their formation to 4-2-3-1. France didn't do anything. And just they switched off. They stopped playing for each other. Um, by the time the third goal went in, which I think 65 minutes, something like that, they brought on um, Pogba for Matuidi, but damage is done. Mm. You know, so, um, yeah. So, France, um, with a rocket up their backside against the France against the Russia side, shorn of its best player. I think France is going to be worthwhile on the handicap there. Because um, they're, they're, they're going to have, you know, they're going to have to prove themselves. They're, mm. they're going to have to smash them. Because uh, they, they can't turn in a second performance like that, you know? Mm-hmm. And I'm not, go ahead, sorry. I was going to say I'm not convinced by uh, the France. So the France front four, Griezmann behind Giroud, and then Mbappe on the right, and oh god, what's his name? Lamar, Thomas Lamar on the left. Right. And I'm not, I'm not convinced that's the best way to play that team. It's hard to shoehorn them all in, though, isn't it? You know, that's the problem. It's the classic England problem when we had like Scholes, Lampard, Gerrard. Yeah. But how do yeah. you put them all on the same team? The answer is you don't. You have yeah. to drop one. And um, you drop them apart, they're easy. You know, I, I even even I wouldn't have Drew. I'd have Mbappe instead of Drew. I'd just I'd have I'd have Mbappe and Griezmann. Uh, I'd play I'd play three and I'd drop uh, Giroud. I'd play Griezmann in the middle, Lamar on the one side, and Mbappe mm. on the other. I guess Lacazette's not getting a look in. Well, no. Ah, God, he's way down the list, isn't he? Your pirate. <laughs> I love Demi, Demi Pia. He, he was a football manager legend for me. <laughs> right, lads. And here was me worried that we wouldn't be able to talk about international football. This is wonderful. Uh, I know you boys aren't, aren't big into it, as I am. But, uh, yeah, uh, I've actually kind of enjoyed the matches uh, and seeing who's been up against each other. There are, of course, matches. Um, there's not that many tonight, are there? There's uh, most of them oh, no, it's only like under twenty. There's a couple. Well, Wales have already played against Uruguay. Actually, they lost earlier. Yeah, Portugal are playing. That's right. Portugal are playing Netherlands. There's a, yeah, there's I got a... Portugal to win that because Netherlands are crap. Yeah, crap. Uh, <laughs> there's a couple tomorrow, and then on Wednesday we'll see the most. So we'll be back on. Uh, we'll be back on Thursday with another episode of the Pro Tips Premier League preview. Yeah, Premier League football. Woo! <laughs> Championship and Syria and Syria B. What? Already been done, sorry, and um, La Liga, boo, says Dan. MLS, Bund- Bundesliga, <laughs> MLS. good stuff. We'll have so we'll, we'll have, have a little action going to an MLS game. So, oh, you're going, uh, yeah, you, uh, yeah, you will right. be around Thursday, right? Is it Red, Red Bulls versus uh, Houston Dynamo? Nice, it's good, man. All right, then, she look as we'll wrap up. Thanks everyone for watching, and uh, yeah, c- come back on Thursday. And uh, for another episode, and uh, yeah, check us out on iTunes, Android Podcatchers, YouTube, and uh, tell all your mates about us as well and help us continue to grow the podcast. Check out protipster.com too for the best free uh, sports tips on the internet. Uh, a little trick for you just go to protipster.com, go to the tipster section, look at who the best tipsters are, follow them, and you'll make it feel bad. All right, yes. thanks. Bye. See you later. Dan's gone. <laughs> Thanks for listening, everybody. Don't forget to check out ProTipster.com, where you can earn money by sharing winning football tips. Check us out on YouTube and Instagram. Our handles there are ProTipsterGlobal. Or get in touch on Twitter, ProTipsterEN, 
or ProTipster IRL. Bye.